Okay, sorry to disappoint. It is not about Indian porn. Um, I, uh, I had to switch with Stefan Esser because I just heard he's uh, learned a very brand new iOS 8.3 jailbreak technique from the Pangu team. So he's putting together those slides right now and he'll be presenting the jailbreak tomorrow. Yeah, screw you, Esser. <laughs> okay, let's get, uh, let's get going with uh, my talk. Um, my talk is pretty much put together with some experiments that I've been doing over the past five years. Um, so I've worked on a lot of exploits, a lot of web hacks, and a lot of uh, tricks over the years. I kind of thought, let me put all these together. So a brief introduction about me. My name is Saumil Shah. Um, my Twitter ID, my LinkedIn ID, et cetera, et cetera. Let's get on to uh, the core content. Of late, what I've been quite fascinated with is the whole idea of hiding in plain sight. I should stay away from the, uh, from the feedback zone. Okay. Uh, what I want to work on, or what I've been working on, is how to take dangerous content, how to take offensive or explosive content, and just hide it out there in plain sight. Um, there's, there's many, there's many uh, techniques, I mean, there's many ideas behind this. One is to avoid detection, one is to you know, just avoid signaturing, and the other is to just make all your exploits look very stylish. Uh, I began playing with images, and all of us have this presumption that images are innocent. I mean, what can go wrong with images? For years, we've been treating images as entirely passive containers. Pixels to be read and pixels to be displayed, and you look at it, Maybe it's picture of cats, maybe it's Indian porn, or whatever it is. But all you do is just look at it, right? Um, however, images have had uh, a rather long history of being used in InfoSec. The first attempts at using images um, for stuff other than displaying pixels is to transmit secret messages. You have steganography. You encode your uh, messages in pixels and send the image over. Steganography is well known. All that is fine. With steganography, what you need is a writer technique and a reader technique. So the writer will encode your message in pixels. Only the writer knows how to do this. Uh, it will travel as a normal image. And when you read the image, only if you know how the message has been encoded can you, take, can you pick up and decode the message. And that's how messages move across. Um, a few years ago, there was an interesting technique that came up when Someone tried to combine, um, I believe it was Billy Rios, uh, but I'm not sure, so I can't confirm the attribution. Uh, Billy or whoever tried to combine uh, GIF files with zip files and created this old term called GIFR. Uh, it's just a concatenation of a GIF file and a zip file. And uh, the delivery technique there was to, encode, was to embed Java applets with GIF files. And when you upload a GIF file, you're also uploading a Java applet along with it. Because Java applet jar files are also zip files. This trick works because the GIF header is at the top of the GIF file. And in zip files, the header is actually not a header, it's a footer. It's at the bottom, at the very end of the, uh, the zip file. So when you try to unpack a zip file, you read the bottom, read the header, and then start to encode it. And this is why it works. Um, later came this whole technique of uh, hiding PHP ASP web shells within images. This was a very simple technique. All you have to do is embed uh, embedded code like PHP or ASP percent tags inside exif data and just, just upload the image. If this data is, if this image is renamed as a PHP file, then it will execute uh, the PHP code. And uh, of course, because you're doing all this, you have to do some stupid cross-site scripting. So there's cross-site scripting in exif data and all that fun stuff. Um, what I want to do is, or what I did is take a different approach. Uh, we know that dangerous content is dangerous. How can we make dangerous content not look dangerous? Right? So you take your attack payload. You have your exploit or whatever it is. You create two containers. You have a safe container, which is a decoder. The decoder does nothing nasty. All it does is read through an array and reconstruct strings. And 
the dangerous content is encoded as pixel data in an image. And we all know that images are innocent. So you, you've pretty much spread the threat over two containers. One which is naturally safe and the other which is presumed safe, but not really safe. So how does this all work? Um, rewinding back to about four years from now, uh, 2011 is when I first started playing around with pixels and encoding data in pixels. The most simple technique is you take your ASCII character set, you have zero to 255 characters, representation in normal ASCII, and assign each of these characters a grayscale value from zero to 255. So that was my 255 shades of gray technique, where you take a character, uh, now they're gonna make movies out of this and whatnot. So now you take this character and each pixel in this image is a character encoded using its ASCII value as a gray value. So now your exploit code gets packed into something like this. This is basically an exploit that you're seeing. Um, I also am an artist and a photographer and I kind of think that maybe we should just make images of all our exploits and do like a modern art exploit version. And when somebody takes a picture of the camera, they get owned. Um, far from it. But here you can see where, you know, where all my decoder is and here you can see the ROP chains. They're encoded in this little bar area and then the rest of the JavaScripts are. So repetitive patterns look similar. It's fun to look at uh, your exploits as grayscale images. And I wrote a little tool to do that. So here's, here's how it's all made. You take your exploit code with all your ROP chains and you can then take this evil JavaScript, click on convert and encode it in an image. Uh, here we had 5,100 characters, so it fits in a nice 72 by 72 square. And now your exploit is encoded in PNG pixels. That's fine, but how do you play it back? How do you attack and how do you uh, destroy someone? The answer to this lies in HTML5 with the canvas tag. Canvas is a very powerful uh, HTML tag. In fact, I bet the W3C guys don't even know what canvas can do. Um, but amongst all these fancy graphics and slideshows and whatnot, I use Canvas to deliver exploits. So you load your PNG in Canvas, run a JavaScript loop, read each pixel, and reconstruct the exploit back as a string inside the JavaScript code. This is the decoder. All that the decoder does is read pixels, reconstruct the string, and build it up. If you now want to trigger your code, you want to now trigger this exploit, you have to eval it. Just stick it into eval and then the code will run and you boom, you get a shell and whatnot. So a lot of people started decrying eval as evil. Oh, if your code has eval, then it's naturally bad and you know we're gonna fault you on it, we're gonna signature you on it, and we're gonna detect your decoder. So it just took me one step, uh, thanks to some uh, some inspiration from Dr. Mario Heydrich. Um, you can write an eval code without using eval at all. This is a slightly old trick. So instead of doing eval of string, what you do is you just create a new function object with a string as a parameter passed to the constructor and just uh, invoke the anonymous function freshly created. So this has got no eval in it. There's no signaturing that can be done in this code, no hooking, nothing whatsoever. Right, and um, all this was fine. It was all theory until it became practice in 2014. Uh, Sukuri uh, tweeted out saying, oh, they've got some this wild new evil technique, and it's fresh and it's an old day and this is how you know, they're encoding deadly pixels and whatnot. So here's their blog post in the sample. Actually, all this code is my code. Somehow, it's, 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 an, old, it's an old piece of code. I'm using the same variables, O data and all this. Actually, I didn't even write this code. I lifted it from ajaxian.com, where somebody was talking about how to you know, decode their own JavaScript and whatnot. So I said, let's apply this to Canvas. So yeah, this old technique became practice, and there was some malware out in the wild which was transmitting exploits using uh, these images. OK, that's all a little bit about history. Let's get on to current stuff. Um, 
from these techniques, I was exploring the possibility of hiding the decoder itself. See, currently in this technique, you, your exploit is encoded as an image, but the decoder remains pure JavaScript. How can we hide the JavaScript decoder as well? And that brings me to a new technique called images. So images is a chameleon file or it's a polyglot file or whatever you want to call it. If you look at it from one way, you see pixels. And you look at it another way, you see code. If you load it, if you load this data block in an image tag, it will draw pixels on the browser. But if you load this same blob on JavaScript, so it should not be SRC, but it should be script, my typo. Let's fix it. Fixed. So if you load it on uh, in JavaScript, it will run the code. Okay, let's see how this is done. Demo number one coming up. Let's hope it works. Eh? Demo god gods can be unforgiving. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna Okay, so here I'm going to start uh, a browser on my target, and uh, let's look at um, so there's a lot of work uh, work in progress stuff. Thanks to Stefan, I had to hurry it up, and I couldn't clean up everything. Okay, so here's some code. I mean, here's a web page. You've got a cat, and the moment you put your mouse over it. You see the code, the JavaScript code starts running. Let me reload it. So what we're seeing is an image, and then as I do a mouse over, it keeps on invoking JavaScript. Let me show you the source. The source is actually ridiculously simple. There's only two tags in this whole thing. And, and check, out the, check out the file names. You have one image, all right? If I click on this image, this is the image. Let me, let me expand it. Sure, it's Gandalf the cat trying to fall into Khazad Doom. <laughs> and uh, if you do the JavaScript, here you have the same file being referenced in a script tag. If I click on the source, you again get the cat. So how the hell do you do it? A cat which displays pixels and a cat which runs JavaScript. Okay, let's see how it's done. It's actually a very dirty trick. I'm kind of uh, even, uh, okay, how the hell do I save it to the desktop? And <laughs> put the mouse over it. All right, let's save it from the source. File, save page as something, something dot chip. Okay, there we go. Let's see this, what it looks like. Actually, if you open it in, uh, um, if you open it in the image viewer, it will it will show you a perfectly valid uh, it'll show a perfectly valid chip file. Let us open it in an editor. So if you see this. You can see that you have your GIF file, GIF 89A, and then, oops, let me screen zoom this one. And then you have slash star. What is slash star in JavaScript? It's a comment. And at the very end, you just have star slash equals zero. So you create a big GIF 89A equals zero and just append your JavaScript code at the end of it. Sure, you're distorting the length and the width of the image, but 
thanks to John Postel's principle of robustness, browsers, image viewers, and all the programs render it properly without any sort of noticeable distortion. And this is how, if you load this in an image, no interference, it loads. If you load this in JavaScript, you have GIF, long comment with pixel data equals zero, and then you have JavaScript running. So it's a cool little trick. It, it works surprisingly well. And uh, just let me check if I have another demo lined up. Sorry, I have to keep on switching back and forth with my notes. Uh, otherwise, I'll forget some demos. I don't want to do that. OK. OK. So that was the trick. I could do it very easily with GIF. And then I started exploring other formats. So with GIF, I, I tried this out on a variety of browsers and image viewers. So your height becomes 2F, 2A. It is slash star. That's a comment. Um, a little bit down after the GIF magic marker, you have the height and the width as uh, in, uh, in in pixel, in 16-bit representation, so your height is 2F2A, your width is 00. Um, this works in Firefox, Safari. IE actually does the right thing, and it does not render this, but later versions of IE do render it. And Chrome works, I've tested it with Opera. It opens up in preview.app and image, XP image viewer doesn't open it, Win7 preview still opens it. Um, so after GIF, I started exploring other file formats. The best one to date is BMP. Good old BMP works in everything and everywhere. And BMP is very, very easy to play with. It's simple header, and you can do this all over. All right, but BMP is not the most preferred format. So I started exploring techniques with other file formats. And uh, some of my recent experiments, I succeeded in making this work with PNG. Well, not really with PNG, but uh, JPEG was, uh, it, it took a little while to make this technique work in JPEG. Um, there's some other considerations. I might get back to the slide later, but uh, just to see what other features it supports. Uh, BMP would have been great, but BMP is not supported in Canvas. So BMP kind of makes it hard to encode the exploits and use them. Um, GIF works great for a decoder, but GIF cannot carry the exploit data because GIF does not use RGB pixels. GIF uses uh, palleted pixels, and that doesn't really work. Um, so that pretty much leaves you PNG and JPEG. So yeah, let's look at JPEG. Um, JPEG is brilliant. I just adapted the images technique to JPEG a uh, few months ago. And with JPEG, you can do not only the image, you can combine JavaScript, you can add HTML, and you can add style sheets all in one package. The reason is JPEG is a very flexible format. JPEG has a lot of headers. It has a lot of markers. You can embed EXIF data in JPEG. You can embed JPEG thumbnails in JPEG. And it's, it's a pretty much flexible format. So I had to dig into a little bit of the format stuff uh, and uh, kind of succeeded making this thing work. Let me show some demos with JPEG. OK. So. this in the normal browser. And uh, I'll open up Here. 
this is an HTML file that I'm opening up. Okay. So what you see on the screen here is you have an alert box. You click OK. You have a heading and you have a, a photograph of a girl in pink. Uh, let us see the source code. If you look at the source code, this is the source code. It's all crazy stuff. What you're seeing is on the browser, you're seeing three elements. You're seeing HTML data, you're seeing images, and you're seeing JavaScript. But it's all coming from one file. Let me open it up in uh, the network inspector and show you. Okay, uh, so in the network inspector, if we look at the traffic, you'll see the get request goes to the same resource, get ping girl, get ping girl, get ping girl. Um, now how does this work? How can one resource generate three things. So, let's see the secret sauce. Okay. So, the secret sauce here is you take your regular JPEG header, you have the start marker which uh, it's always FFD8, FFE0, and then you have the length, and then you have the initial marker, which says J50 and all the whole JPEG stuff. And then it goes on for hex 10 bytes, and then you have the next section. This is next section markers, FFE2. So my first shot is, let me modify the length. I'm gonna make the length as 2F2A, which is a JavaScript comment. Now you get a very extra long J5 header, and you can stuff a whole lot of extra stuff in here. This gives me the ability to embed HTML directly in here. So now I take, I, I, this gets transformed into comment. I start first with putting JavaScript code. And then within the JavaScript, I embed HTML. And within HTML, I embed CSS. And uh, let me show you how this whole thing is built up. Um, So here's pinkgirl.html. Let me see if I can get the screen colors. Uh. Sorry. Somehow it doesn't want to change the screen colors. But here you have your JPEG header, and then you have your uh, alert. This is the JavaScript, and then immediately following the JavaScript is an HTML, and then you have the rest of the section, and here is the rest of your JPEG file. Now, if you look at the code, what I'm doing in the code is I have an HTML tag, the image tag, is a self-referential image tag. So it says image source equals hash, which means pull the same file up as an image, and script source equal hash, pull the same file up as a JavaScript. So the, the same content gets loaded three times, but it's all one data package. Um, if, we th if we check the file type, So if I take uh, the Unix file command and check the file type, it says this is a JPEG file type. If I run exif tool, so if you, if, you're, uh, if you have programs that monitor the type of the content, this is gonna pass all the tests as JPEG. And here you have your exif data. It tells you that it, I took it uh, with my D90 and it, I took it with all these other settings. 
all the data is perfectly preserved, yet you've got these two things embedded in it. This will live and be transmitted as a pure JPEG file. Um, proceeding further, let's, uh, let's, let me show you how to make one. So here's a, I just lose the mouse pointer somewhere. So here I have some JavaScript code which says syscan 2015 rocks. Here I have uh, the HTML code which is basically, okay, you're loading the same uh, image source equals hash, script source equals hash. Uh, let's change this to, syscan must not die. And uh, let me show you a, a JPEG file to put it into. Um, here's a JPEG container. Uh, this is basically Indian sand paintings that we do on New Year's Day and whatnot. Uh, okay, so let's combine all this stuff into um, So you've got to just supply the JavaScript, the HTML, the source image, and, uh, and the, the target. And if I open, there's syscan 2015. So here if I open it, it says syscan must not die. And and opens up. Now you've got this little problem. You've got this ugly J5 marker at the top and says like, why the hell does an HTML, uh, HTML file have this J5 marker? So you use some simple, uh, use some simple style sheets to disguise it. So here's, uh, in the style sheet, I just set the visibility to be hidden and then display everything else properly. If I recombine this into syscan15 and reload the page, Oh yeah, I made a mistake in my script. No wonder. Rewrite it. And now that whole J5 thing is gone. So now this looks really, really clean. Okay, so where am I getting with, where, where am I getting to with this? Uh, so far we've seen techniques where we can hide JavaScript in images. What we want to get to is we can hide exploit code in pixels. We can hide JavaScript in images. We need JavaScript to decode the pixels out. So we will create two images. One is a decoder JavaScript, and one is the exploit itself encoded as pixels. There's no JavaScript in there. So let's see, uh, let's see a new demo. Um, and we're gonna use HTML5 for exploit development because with heap sprays we have a problem with IE9 and modern browsers. So we can do canvas spraying, might as well use canvas uh, for heap spraying as well. And uh, canvas is really good. Canvas, uh, I, I, adopt, I adapted a technique uh, uh, published by ZeroMem and refined it to do canvas heap spraying. So let me show you an exploit with uh, canvas heap spraying. I want to make 
make sure this demo doesn't bomb. We're going to do a, a simple exploit. Well, not really simple. It's a user after free exploit, exploit. And they're, for most of us, they're fairly complex, except for a few of you guys sitting at the back. There's a child's play for you. Um, so let's see a, a, um, a recent user after free, the MS uh, IEC input exploit. So here's the JavaScript for the exploit. This is the JavaScript code. This has got HTML heap spraying, where I'm taking the, uh, taking the, uh, the data and encoding it as pixels in a canvas and spraying canvases. It is slow. I, I still need to make it fast enough, but it's, it works. That's what counts. You drop chains and all your usual use after free exploits. Uh, stuff that I teach in classes. And here we have a loader for it. So here's an HTML file which will load the exploit and trigger it. Let's see, uh, first of all, let's test if this works. If not, the demos are dead and I have to get out of the stage. Okay. So there we go. So here's the exploit is running, and you can see in the memory consumption, the, the memory spikes to the very top. Uh, let it run. Um, the, the heap spray is slightly slow on this machine. In the meantime, I'll, uh, I'll show you what we can do to it by transforming, the, transforming this exploit to images. told you the demo gods are not with me. Once again. Okay, let's try once again and see I hope it works. Um, in the meantime, I wanted to show the tool that I used to uh, use to encode exploits with. This is called Stegosploit. So you take your entire exploit, copy it and paste it within Stegosploit. This will encode all your pixels. You can hardly see it on the screen, but I'm going to zoom in. You see each pixel is encoded as transparency values in the image. If you have a very dense image, you will never know. Oh, and we did the demo work. We have a calculator sitting here. Okay. This is an old exploit. Oh, this is not uh, deserve applause because this is straight off the wire. Now let's see if the real demo works. Now we have encoded this exploit into a uh, uh, into an image of uh, stegos stegosaurone acid. And uh, now let us see 
Well, actually, instead of the stegosaur, I have a nice uh, decent uh, picture. Um, let us see how we can load this. Um, I have a loader. Um, so this is the loader. So the loader contains alpha decode.js, which is the decoder. And here you have your image, source equals elephant2.png, and uh, that's it. So this loader will load an image. And there's JavaScript being loaded, which is called alpha decode. Let's see alpha decode.js. And here is alpha decode. Alpha decode is all this code which was uh, proudly displayed by Sukuri as being fresh zero day code and whatnot. But anyway, this is code to decode pixels from the canvas. Let us run this together and see how we can deliver the same exploit using uh, the image. So wipe my browser. This has got to be C input png loader dot html. Okay. Now here's a loader. And let's see how this fares. So the moment I do a mouse over, this loader triggers, and now you see the the graph spiking up. Uh, and eventually when it settles down, it will uh, give you a shell. Now that, ex that entire exploit code with the ROP chain and all, now became pixels and, oops, there it goes, uh, created the calc. I wanted to show you the pixels. So let me do it again. I will not do a mouse over, otherwise it's going to trigger. But here you can see the exploit is encoded as pixels. Here you are, is these little pixels. And this will be decoded by the decoder JavaScript and then triggered. So now if I do a mouse over, I just put the mouse over in place for the demo so that it doesn't trigger immediately, and then we'll get, uh, we'll get a calc. And while that is loading up, the heap spray takes a lot of time. Let me show you uh, the last bit. Here, the JavaScript is still in pure JavaScript. What I want to do is combine the JavaScript into the image as well, and create sort of a perfect storm exploit. The decoder is in JavaScript, the image data is in JavaScript, you load two or three images, one of them will decode the other and trigger the exploit and uh, give you the shell code. Um, okay, so the last bit coming up. Last bit. So 
So here we have three images. This is basically my mother doing the sand painting outside our house. And uh, you know, it's just try to show how it's done with, with little zoom up shots. But let's first look at the source code here. The source, as you can see, is this uh, JPEG file. It's actually a JPEG file containing other decoder files and all the other J JPEG data. If I show you the, uh, the network trace from it, um, I, have, I have it saved. I just want to open that up. So this is the network trace when you load this image. You will see that you have, you have a request for JPEG, you have a request for HTML, you have another request for JPEG, and uh, you have a request for PNG. The initiators are, uh, so the first JPEG was triggered by a script the HTML file, which is also a JPEG, is triggered by IMG. Uh, the decoder is triggered by IMG. And the exploit data, PNG, is also triggered by IMG. So at no point, you, you have anything other than images flying across the wire. And now I have it programmed to uh, trigger on, on mouse over. So if I scroll to the very bottom, the third image, when it goes on mouse over, um, the, uh, the heap space starts running. And if the demo gods are with us, this will blow up into a shell. And it did. It, it worked. Pop a shell with images and image data. Right. So now let's, let's wind it up. That was all of the demos. So this is what we saw. We saw the image decoder embedded as an image with a steganographically embedded, encoded exploit, and you get shells. Uh, not only does this give you the ability to stealthily deliver exploits, not only does this give you the ability to del deliver exploits with style, but you can also time shift your exploits. Your payload can be delivered in the past. Um, if I make you view an image sometime in October, and if I've set the cache settings right, this, this image will be saved on your cache for a very long time. And now, fast forward to present date, if I, show, if I now open up the decoder, which will load your older image, your older image will not be loaded over the wire. It will be a 304 request. There's no data transmitted over the wire. The image is pulled off from your cache, and then you get a share. So there's a lot of possibilities for really offensive techniques. Um, when you abuse containers, when you abuse encoding, when you do polyglot files, all sorts of uh, attacks and attack techniques and attack delivery is possible. Um, we've seen some attacks like this emerge in the wild. It's not related just to browsers. Um, from the offensive side, it's a big playground. From the defensive side, it's, a, it's an incident research, uh, incident response nightmare. How far does your time machine go to? How, how far back do you inspect your logs and how do you find out what went over the wire? Uh, also, you cannot rely upon extensions, file headers, mime types, or even magic numbers. The entire file is a valid JPEG, not just the first part of it. The whole thing is a true JPEG file. So how are you going to do, deal with this? I don't know. That's why I'm talking over here. Um, so, well. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. I want to thank Michael Zalewski, Angie Albertini, Zero Mem, Dr. Mario Heydrich, Thomas Lim, and the entire Syscan crew, and all of you guys for making Syscan really awesome. This is the end. Thank you very much. Well done. Well done. Thank you, Samuel. Very good. Questions? Hey, great stuff. Um, I'm wondering with animated GIFs, are you able to like do a multi-stage exploit with that at all? Is there anything you've looked at or? Uh, that's a very, uh, that's a cool, I thought of animated GIFs as well. The animation part is only when you display the GIF. 
But when you encode JavaScript in it, it's just this one static big blob. Gives you a lot of places to do stuff, but you can't like, you can't say JavaScript one is shown with frame one and JavaScript two is shown with frame two. That doesn't work. Thanks. No problem. <laughs>